Hello. Are you surprised? Do you know what is this? Yes. You are right. Pulse oximeter, which has become very familiar, very popular, common uh, during this COVID pandemic. All markets were finding the scarcity. Price was shot up to a very, very higher level where people were not able to afford it. And then the debate on what could be the exact pricing, what can be the maximum selling price, the government upper band. All these dis discussions were happening on this small device, which helps out in identifying a person or a very critical condition, breathing condition. So today we are going to discuss on pulse oximeter. So it is very curious. Uh, many people used to ask, how does it function? Okay. On from the fingertip, how it is actually measuring the oxygen saturation and how are you assessing the functional aspects. More to that, in today's session, we are going to cover up a few things on its hardware, what are its components and what is the algorithm for functioning the software for this programming for this device. Where are you able to find the manufacturing and various different means of information. So surely we expect that you now this is the time where we should unite, where we should uh, join together for working for a better cause for the society. So this should, should be definitely a triggering point for those who want to venture into its manufacturing, cost reduction, more optimized designs and various other scopes. Let's move on to the discussion. Pulse oximeter. Let's look at the different display and outputs what we are getting. We can see the SpO2, the blood oxygen saturation level, the pulse rate, you have a bar graph indication for the pulse rate. There is a waveform which averages out to give a value. Then to operate, you have one button operation and certainly there is an opening for keeping the finger in. So this is a very familiar small device, especially now during COVID pandemic. Let's look at in detail. See, oximeter is a non-invasive method of measuring oxygenated hemoglobin. Non-invasive, we are all familiar, which doesn't do an invasion. So it monitors the oxygen saturation, which is denoted as SpO2 of patient's hemoglobin, Hb, and heart rate. And how it is measured and how it is calculated. SpO2 is defined as the ratio between the concentration of oxygenated hemoglobin, which is denoted as HpO2, and the, all the hemoglobin present in the blood. So, oxygenated hemoglobin is certainly the, the fuel, the energy for each cell for breaking the glucose the ATP. Hemoglobin has a higher absorption at 660 nanometer wavelength of red light spectra and oxygenated hemoglobin HP auto has a higher absorption at 940 nanometer which is infrared light spectra this is the very basic measurement principle happening in oximeter and how it is utilized this measurement based on the patient's current spo2 the oxygen supply can be given if the saturation level is less than the certain specified limit normally it is 95 is the value recommended for somebody who is there in the ICU or hospital care, a wireless signals can also send 
to the non-invasive ventilation floor meter and the vacuum regulator or the delivery can be adjusted. The oxygen supply to the patient is automatically controlled based on the oxygen saturation change which is received from the oximeter. Let's look at the different components. There is a light delivery analog switches, drivers, then the LEDs at 660 nanometer, which we have already seen the purpose. There is an IR operating at 950 nanometer. When we are using a photoplethysmography, a green LED with 530 nanometer is used. This is to determine the heart rate by monitoring changes in the skin blood vessels. The other component is ADC, analog to digital converter. Then we have MCU, microcontroller unit chip, the photodiode. So when we do a photoplethysmography, satellite takes the skin blood vessels, the light source is done to the surrounding tissues, the venous blood and the non-pulsatile non arterial blood that gives a DC stable arterial pulse is an AC signal. So the partial discharge reflection for a PPG photoplethysmography ideally like this is steady DC and a pulsatile DC. The working principle of pulse oximeter the measurement starts when the microcontroller unit based lithium battery management generates a pulse with modulation PWM that signal which varies the LED intensity. Algorithm described in the software model which changes the PWM duty cycle value to adjust the LED intensity for every kind of user because for different skin type color program has to be adjusted. LED calibration start by taking the LED filtered baseline and every person has a different finger size and skin color. The LED needs to be calibrated to acquire an accurate signal. The LED driver circuits helps to drive LEDs so that the power is not provided directly by the MCU. Using transistors, LEDs are powered directly by the voltage, common collector line and controller controlled by the MCU. The switch control pin on multi-controller unit selects which LED is turned on at that time. So the light from red and infrared LEDs on the sensor travels through the finger and the non-absorbed light is received at the other end in the photo detector. So this light reception will vary based on the oxygenated hemoglobin and the hemoglobin. The signal passes through a current to the voltage converter where it is filtered, amplified and converted into voltage. The signal is now multiplexed to its respective filter and amplification stage depending on whether it is red or infrared. The signal is amplified in order to be detected easily by the MCU in analog digital converter. The filtered signal is then sent to an ADC signal on the MCU and it will display on screen. So this is the flow by which the operation happens. And now let's look at this description on a flow diagram. So the abbreviations used in this uh, flow diagram is given on the chart. So we have the LED, a red LED and infrared LED light spectrum and we have this finger then on the other end we have the photodiode uh, receptor so then the signal after absorption is given to the trans impedance amplifier then it passes through the programmable gain amplifier an analog to digital converter then it is given to the microcontroller unit. So we have a memory where the standard healthy absorption rate is stored. This is based on the empirical data of different healthy person based on different criteria or age that statistical value uh, an empirical table is kept in the memory 
to give a reference and to compare with the rece received data. So we have a line protocol and the system monitoring happens there with a multiplexer and an ADC. So we have the voltage reference and voltage monitor. So from there, the microcontroller unit gives to the backlight and to the display. So we have uh, the beep, the audio DAC and we have the audio output, the data storage, then the user interface from that the microcontroller gives signal to the digital to analog converter. The LED drivers are there which gives complete the loop with the light at the LED. So then comes the battery or power management system where we have AC or DC adapter, uh, the battery charger, battery level and percentage, okay, the, uh, the, the type of battery. The power management is the block. So this is how overall the flow diagram. Now let's have a quick look at the nine steps algorithm. Stage one is turn on the IR infrared LED, wait signal to stabilize, read IR signal and baseline, then turn off IR LED, then wait signal to stabilize, then turn on red LED, wait signal to stabilize, read red signal and baseline, then turn off red LEDs. Then happens the photodiode absorption and further measurement, how the measurement happens and how the further calculation happens that we have already seen in the flow diagram. So this is how the algorithm proceeds. So here is a list of a few manufacturers and traders which are generally available on your web search or in general and their their uh, locations. Uh, with this, we are finishing this basic information sharing and the session. Okay, how did you find the discussion about the oximeter? Are you ready to manufacture it? Was the information sufficient for you to start thinking on? We expect more such discussions and those who are genuinely interested and try, trying to venture to such initiatives. This should be a torchlight for people to enter into such manufacturing, cost reduction. We will discuss in our upcoming episodes similar useful topics. Till then, see you. Thank you.